Uzu Zangpo, Bhutan e-learning project welcomes children to this lesson. I'm Dam Chuang Chu. This is a physics lesson uh, for key stage five classes 11 and 12. In this lesson, you will learn about Coulomb's law and the Kirchhoff's law. Great Greek philosopher Thales observed that when a piece of umber is rubbed against a wool, it acquires the property of attracting the light object. Since it happened 2,500 years ago, this observation was not given any importance. Later, several materials like ebonoid, glass, and sulfur shows the same property like that of a piece of amber and attracts a light body. As you can see here, a balloon when rubbed against a woolen cloth, it acquires a negative charge and the woolen cloth acquires a positive charge. This shows that the two neutral objects get electrified, which means they acquire a charge. So what is electric charge? The intrinsic property of materials that makes it possible for them to exert electrical force and response to electric force is known as electric charge. It is denoted mostly by capital Q, where electric charge is the product of electric current and time. So charge Q is equal to electric current I times time T. The SI unit of electric charge is Coulomb and it's denoted by capital letter C. Therefore, one Coulomb is equal to one ampere times one second. It is a scalar quantity. Now, let us look at the basic property of a charge. Negatively charged balloon, when it is placed against the neutral wall, we can see that the negative charges on the wall get repelled and the positive, and the positive charges, charges on the wall, on the wall get attracted. Therefore, like charges repel and unlike charges attract. The force of repulsion or attraction between two like or unlike charges is called Coulombian force. If we bring two like charges, it exerts the force of same magnitude in opposite direction, whereas if we bring two unlike charges together, you can see the force of attraction between the two charges. The equation giving the electrostatic force of repulsion or attraction of two charged particles is explained in the Coulomb's law. Now let us look at the magnitude of a force. Currently, the force out here shows 7 Newton. And let us see what happens if we increase the magnitude of charge Q1. Accordingly, the magnitude of a force out here gets increases. Similarly, if we increase the distance between the two charges, Q1 and Q2, you can see out here the magnitude of the force decreases. Right now, you can see the magnitude of a force that is exerted uh, onto charge Q1 due to charge Q2 is shown as 6 Newton. Now, let us see what happens if we increase the magnitude of charge 1. You might have noticed that as we increase the magnitude of charge 1, the force out here also increases. So not only the magnitude of charge 1, even if we increase the magnitude of a charge 2, you can see the force out here increases. Likewise, if we decrease the magnitude of charge 1, the force decreases. Now let us look at what happens if we increase the distance between charge Q1 and Q2 to the magnitude of a force out here. So if we increase the distance between charge Q1 and Q2, the magnitude of a force decreases. Likewise, if we decrease the distance between charge Q1 and Q2, the magnitude of a force increases. 
Based on this concept, now let us try to state the Coulomb's law. As you have seen in the simulation, now let us try to state the Coulomb's law. According to the Coulomb's law, two stationary point charges Q1 and Q2 repel or attract each other with a force F which is directly proportional to the product of the charges. Inversely proportional to the square of distance R between them. From where the electrostatic force F is directly proportional to Q1, Q2 over R square. So when the charges are placed in vacuum or in air, we can calculate the electrostatic force between the charges by using a formula. F is equals to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 over R square. Where 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught is the proportionality constant, which is approximately equal to 9 times 10 raised to 9 Newton meter square per Coulomb square. Remember that the force exerted by two charges on each other are equal and opposite. Force exerted on charge 1 due to charge 2 is equal to force exerted on charge 2 due to charge 1. Negative sign out here indicates that the two forces always act in opposite direction. If a system contains a number of interacting charges, then the net force on any one charge equals the vector sum of force exerted on it by all the other charges. As explained in the earlier case, so if you want to find out the electrostatic force that is exerted on charge Q1 due to charge Q2, Q3 and Q4. So how do we calculate the electrostatic force out here on charge Q1? So we have to find out force that is exerted on charge Q1 due to charge Q2. Similarly, the force exerted on Q1 due to charge Q3. So force exerted on charge 1 due to charge 3. And charge 1 due to 4. So where we can calculate the net force acting on charge 1 due to charge 2, charge 3, charge 4 by adding up those forces together. Now let us look at electric current. When charge flow in a conductor in a particular direction, this flow of charge is called electric current. Electric current, denoted mostly by capital I, is equal to electric charge Q divided by time T. Unit of electric current is ampere and is denoted by capital letter A. Therefore, 1 ampere is equal to 1 coulomb over 1 second. Potential difference. The difference in the amount of energy that charge carriers have between two points in a circuit is known as potential difference. The potential difference, denoted mostly by capital V, is the product of current and resistance. The unit of potential difference is volt and it is denoted by capital letter V. Electrical resistance. The obstruction offered to the flow of electric current in a circuit is known as electrical resistance. The electrical resistance is equal to the potential difference over current. The unit of resistance is ohm. Therefore, 1 ohm is equal to 1 volt over 1 ampere. Now with the concept of electric current, potential difference, and electrical resistance. Let us look at the Kirchhoff's law. In 1824, Kirchhoff suggested two laws to determine the current flowing through a conductor in a complicated circuit. First, let us look at Kirchhoff's first law, which is also known as junction rule. In an electric circuit, the algebraic sum of the current meeting at any junction in the circuit is zero. You can see out here the five conductors 
carrying a five different current I1, I2, I3, I4 and I5 meet at junction A. If you look at the arrow, current I1 and I2 enter the junction whereas current I3, I4, I5 leave the junction. According to the sign convention, the current which enters the junction is always taken as positive and current leaving the junction is always taken as negative. So therefore we will say I1 plus I2 because both I1 and I2 are entering the junction whereas I3, I4 and I5 are leaving the junction where we are taking its value as negative. So according to the Kirchhoff's first law, the sum of the current here at the junction will always be equal to zero. Where we can rewrite this equation and say that I1 plus I2 is equal to I3 plus I4 plus I5. From here, you can see that the sum of current entering the junction is equal to the sum of current leaving the junction. Now let us look at the Kirchhoff's second law, which is also known as loop rule. The algebraic sum of change in potential around any closed resistance loop is zero. The change in potential that is denoted by delta V is equals to zero where we have found that the potential difference is the product of current and resistance. Therefore, the summation IR is equals to zero. If you look at this circuit out here, in a circuit you can find two loops, loop 1 and loop 2. So we are going to determine the current that is flowing through a circuit. So current I1, current I2 and then we will have the sum of current I1 and current I2 as current I3. So how can we use a Kirchhoff's rule out here to determine the electric current? in such a complicated circuit. We know that the change in potential is equal to I R. So according to the sign convention, the change in potential is taken as negative when the current flows in a direction of a loop. So I1 R1, if you look at the direction here, it is along with the direction of a loop. So we take the value of change in potential as negative. Likewise, if you look at the current I2 with respect to the direction of a loop, so current I2 is against the direction of loop 1. So we take it as positive. So I2 R2. Now the direction of a loop with the EMF. So if the direction of a loop goes from negative terminal to positive terminal of EMF, we take its value as positive. So positive E1. Likewise, in this case, the direction is going from positive to negative. So, we take the value of EMF E as negative E2. So, that is the case in loop 1. And according to the Kirchhoff second rule, so here the change in potential has to be equals to zero.
Now similarly, if we look at loop 2, the direction of loop 2, you can see it out here. And let us take the change in potential, I2, R2. So I2, R2, since it is along with the direction of a loop, we take it as negative. And then we have I1 plus I2, which I have said earlier, we can take this value as I3. So I3, R3 is also again, is along with the direction of a loop where we take it as negative I3, R3. And we have EMF E where it, the, the direction of a loop shows it from negative terminal to positive terminal. So we take its value as positive E2, which is equals to zero. Uh, before we wind up our lesson, let us uh, recapitulate what we have discussed so far. So we talked about uh, the Coulomb's law, where we have found that according to the Coulomb's law, two stationary point charges, Q1 and Q2, repel or attract each other with a force F, which is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance R between them. Likewise, we have also discussed two Kirchhoff's law which help us in determining the current. The first law, which we also call it as junction rule, states that in an electric circuit, the algebraic sum of the current meeting at any junction in a circuit is zero. We also discussed about the Kirchhoff's second law, which is known as a loop rule. And it states that the algebraic sum of the changes in potential around any closed resistance loop is zero. With this, now we have a question out here, which is based on the Kirchhoff's law. Use both the Kirchhoff's law to determine current I1, I2, and I3. Thank you for attending this lesson. I'll see you all in my next lesson. Thank you and continue.